for sports. Time for our second conversation and it's time for our book review. This morning I'm joined by Muthoni Mushemi who's the author of Attack of the Shidas and also Anne Eboso who's also part of that particular book. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Nice to have you in the studio. You're looking <laughs> nice. <Thank laughs> Lovely. You. All right, uh, Muthoni, tell us about Attack of the Shidas. Very interesting name there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, Attack of the Shidas was commissioned by the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. um, after they did some very scary, or they did some research mm -hmm. and had very scary findings. They discovered that something like 12% of children mm -hmm. had been part of a conversation around the country discussing a tribe being thrown out of a particular area. Mm -hmm. They said something like 37% of the children believed that their own tribe was superior to other tribes. And so we know that the scourge of tribalism yeah. is, is something that we really need to tackle um, from really from the bottom up. We really need to ensure that children do not buy into these stereotypes mm -hmm. and into, I suppose, the illness that is affecting the country. And we saw it, uh, the manifestation in the last election. Mm -hmm. And um, so KHRC really wanted to have a tool, if you like, a resource mm -hmm. that would stimulate discussion. So the book um, I wrote a year ago, um, it was published a year ago, and the idea behind the book, um, it's written as science fiction, mm -hmm. because I wanted the children to fall in love with it. You know, sometimes it's uh, very easy to preach it to children. <laughs> <laughs> you want them to be engrossed yes. by, you know, by the story. Yes. Um, the story is pretty straightforward, but it's about three children who discover they have superpowers, mm -hmm. and they discover that the thieves who are stealing water from the only borehole mm -hmm. in town are actually aliens from another planet. Mm -hmm. They're called Shidas. And uh, these Shidas are invisible. Mm -hmm. So nobody believes the children. And the children are from three different communities who, as the water runs out in the town, mm -hmm. begin to blame and accuse each other. Mm -hmm. And it leads almost to a situation of war. And the thing that the children find out through their superpowers is that if they can unite, mm -hmm. then they can defeat the Shidas. But the challenge is, how do you unite in a situation where your relatives, your friends, mm -hmm. your teachers, everybody's telling you, do not trust that person mm -hmm. because they're from a different community. Yeah. So that's basically the conundrum that, uh, that you have to read the book is to it a, find for out. for kids only or <laughs> no, it's for everyone. A copy. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's for everyone and it's available in all the bookshops mm -hmm. and uh, supermarkets. Okay. So I certainly encourage everyone <laughs> to get a copy. Okay, yes. uh, we'll talk about the, the, that title, Attack of the Shidas, in just mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. But then, Anne, uh, w what, it's very worrying what uh, Muthoni has just said, that our the children, indeed, also have this tribal mentality. It's, mm -hmm. uh, don't you think it's scary? Yeah, it's very scary, mm -hmm. especially after the research from the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. It's so scary. And the other scary bit is just apart from the ethnic point of view yes. where the kids have been exposed to so much ethnicity mm -hmm. is that uh, most kids also don't read and that is where we really now have to have a reading revolution in the country. Mm -hmm. And that's why uh, we have uh, come up with in Story Moja, we have Stata Library, which is basically to en ensure there is access of mm -hmm. books to children and we have uh, reading the Reading Aloud Day, which is coming on Thursday, mm -hmm. and this is basically to excite the children into reading. And the AK, the Attack of the Shidas, will be used as the extract. The, it will be the extract that will be read on that particular day. Ah, okay. Mm, yes. All right. Th there's so many ways I think that we can tackle the issue about children and you know keeping them away from ethnicity and you know being tribal. You know. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, writing the book is one of them. What, what are other things that you know we can do as a society to make sure that our children are not infiltrated in all this tribalism that probably is going on with the elder generation, so to speak? Well, I believe knowledge is power. And what happens is uh, children are, you know, they eavesdrop. They listen to conversations mm -hmm. that are going on in their neighborhoods, even amongst their parents, uh, mm -hmm. amongst their families. Because sometimes parents can be a bit careless, you yes. know, when they're discussing, politics you know, politics <laughs> or <laughs> issues. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And so what happens is that what, what I particularly like about reading, and it's reading, whether you read it on the internet mm -hmm. or read it uh, any which way, or you buy a book or whatever, mm -hmm. is that it gives you, in a sense, an independent uh, source of information. Mm -hmm. It gives you a different way of looking at things, of understanding the world in a much more nuanced mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. You know, especially when you can relate to the story and you can relate to the characters, you know, the tribulations, whatever it is that they're going mm -hmm. through within the story. 
So I have to say that as Story Moja, we believe very much in the power of the written words, mm -hmm. um, in whichever way it's presented, whether digitally or, or presented as, as uh, hard print. Mm -hmm. We also think that creating excitement around that, because a lot of people think that reading is something that's a bit boring <laughs> yeah. or something to do only if you're a child exactly. or, or if you you're know, in school and you need to, need to do an exam, <laughs> etc. Well, I don't think that is true at yeah. all. Mm -hmm. And, and for, fortunately, with children especially, they really recognize the power of stories. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Children love Indeed. stories. Yeah. And to be honest, even human beings, from the dawn of time, mm -hmm. we, are, we are storytellers. And it's only books are just one way of telling mm -hmm. a story, mm -hmm. a much more modern way of telling a story than perhaps um, in the old ways mm -hmm. uh, where we used to tell the stories orally, but perhaps do not have that time to do so. Yeah. So at the moment, what we're doing is trying to encourage discussions through books mm -hmm. about um, the issues that matter. And one of the issues, of course, being tribalism. And if you read the book and share it with others, then in a way, what we're doing is promoting uh, discussions around ethnicity yes. that will hopefully, you know, punguzarit, <laughs> you know, <laughs> reduce yes. it. Yes. So what we hope is that on the 31st, which is this Thursday, mm -hmm. The whole of Kenya will read the extract. Mm -hmm. It's available on the Starter Library mm -hmm. uh, website. Okay. Um, and, and I'm hoping your station will put it up. <laughs> 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 but it's Google <laughs> Starter Library and it's there. Mm -hmm. And if they all read the extract for 15 minutes, I think it creates excitement. It creates a point of discussion because the extract itself is chosen because mm -hmm. it is stimulating. Mm -hmm. Um, we've got over a uh, hundred thousand children confirmed to participate. Mm -hmm. We're hoping that there'll be an equal number of adults <laughs> who will also participate <laughs> yeah. after watching uh, yeah. watching this show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and and basically, it's our way of trying to get the whole conversation going around mm -hmm. the country right. and beginning to say, you know, children have a role too in promoting peace. Okay, yeah. mm -hmm. what led you to write this book? Because most many authors. Before they, they, they write a book, there's something, there's an impetus, there's something that, you know, led them to it. Is it something that happened, something you saw, something you heard that, you know, led to you deciding, okay, you know what, I'm going to write a book about this very big issue that is affecting our society? I think like uh, many authors, you get stimulated by the issues that you hear um, sort of causing conflict around, mm -hmm. you know, around us. Mm -hmm. So after the post-election violence, I wrote a lot in my adult, um, as an adult, I, for adult readers, mm -hmm. I write under the name Modoni Garland, and, and I wrote a lot about the post-election um, violence. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, I kept feeling that there needs to be interventions for children as well, because the adults are going home and discussing these issues mm -hmm. in front of those children. And there just hasn't been enough, mm -hmm. you know, um, discussion with the children or platforms in which the children could discuss their fears. And um, we published at that time a book called uh, Land of the Kitchen which is about kitchen utensils. Mm -hmm. um, some are made of metal, some are made of wood, mm -hmm. and they start <laughs> fighting, you know, because the sufriya is making too much noise. Miko gets upset <laughs> and, and, um, and eventually causes a fire in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. And the idea again behind that was to try, uh, uh, try and use it as an intervention where the children begin to ask, why did the Mwiko did mm -hmm. do that? Why mm -hmm. did the sufriya, you know, um, not handle it in a different mm -hmm. way? Uh, right, the, you know, anger happens, you know, things happen that make people angry. How else could we handle that mm -hmm. anger? That sort of thing. So I saw the power at that time mm -hmm. of, of writing fiction that can make you laugh on the one hand, but also <laughs> kind of makes you think and wonder, you know, yeah. and use it as a way to sort of teach lessons, but in a way where the kids are not resentful mm -hmm. or feeling, oh, don't keep hammering me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yes. All right, mm. and w w what is the role of school because as per an excerpt that I read when I was preparing mm -hmm. for the interview I saw that a third of Kenyan uh, children when in school mm -hmm. are have conversations about kicking uh, the other uh, the other child from another tribe from their area or from their region mm -hmm. I mean what is the role of school when it comes to children and ethnicity okay if I just go to the role of schools probably mm -hmm. I'll share with you statistics that were done by Uweza okay uh, Weather says, uh, according to the study they did, seven out of ten children mm -hmm. in class three could not do exams for class two in the year 2011. Oh. And in the year 2012, it was even worse. Mm -hmm. A third of, uh, third of Kenyan children between the age of 10 to 16 mm -hmm. years could not pass the basic literacy exams. Oh. So this clearly shows that, uh, yes, uh, our Kenyan children, the, the thing that we need to improve more is the reading culture. Mm -hmm. 
So what the Kenyan school education system actually needs to do is to improve the reading culture, mm -hmm. and this is what the Reading Revolution, Story Moja Reading Revolution intends to do. Mm -hmm. Once we do this, we address the issue of uh, ethnicity. Uh, like the study you're talking about where a third of uh, Kenyan students, actually it's um, a third of Kenyan students have been this conversation where mm -hmm. they have been talking about how to kick out their tribe, mm -hmm. one tribe from their neighborhood mm -hmm. and, and uh, this kind of and thing. And how it's old are these children? These children are basically below the age of 14 years. So you oh. see the way it's very worrying. So you're talking class seven all the way down. Yes. Mm -hmm. So once they participate in this, you can imagine when they grow up as adults, what mm -hmm. kind of society we'll have. You already know, like, uh, and uh, they believe that their tribes are superior than the others. So what happens is we grow up into this uh, kind of society where there is a lot of rage and everybody is mm -hmm. looking at the other suspiciously. Mm -hmm. My tribe has to be the most superior, mm -hmm. and that's what you want to believe. Mm -hmm. So the only thing that can actually change this is education. Mm -hmm. People need knowledge, 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 knowledge. Right. It is only the key. Indeed. Yeah. Indeed. M Muthoni, you, you, this is a very sensitive topic and it's very, very, it's a very important conversation that mm -hmm. we are having. Uh, many people, you know, we think about the adults and, you know, everybody is preaching peace, left, right, center, but no one really is thinking about the children who will be the next generation, mm -hmm. who will be the next adults, you know, in the near future. I mean, how are you going to make sure that this book gets to as many children as possible? Um, I love your question because I think there, there's a role f everyone has mm. to play. Mm. There's a role that I've played as a writer in getting it out. There's a role that Kenya Human Rights Commission have played in, in making it possible mm -hmm. for both me to write the book but also promoting it in forums that I might not be able to promote it in. Mm -hmm. But there's a role that you're also playing mm -hmm. as, as the media to let people know that the book exists. There are roles that our retailers are playing in facilitating, mm -hmm. etc. So I guess the real answer is that it takes a nation. <laughs> it takes <laughs> a nation to make sure that books are available to children. It takes a nation to convince um, people, honestly, that it's so important mm -hmm. that children read. If they're you know, and sometimes, you know, we get into these little side arguments that say, oh, you're only promoting English or you're only promoting Swahili. Mm -hmm. Attack of the Shidas, we are currently um, doing the Swahili translation. So mm -hmm. it will be available in Swahili within, our, within this year, certainly. Um, in fact, within the next few months, etc. Mm -hmm. But what I was going to say is that as the situation, as the education system is currently set up, we're being taught in English. If you do not have a facility for the language, you will suffer, yes. even mm -hmm. if you are very good yeah. at other languages. So what happens is, I don't think we're forthright enough with our children to say, you know, by the way, I, I am suffering as an adult from not reading, mm -hmm. because this country would be so much further if we all had knowledge, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because a lot of parents say, you know, Reading is good for you, but they don't read. <laughs> you go to their houses, they have big TVs, <laughs> nothing wrong with that, but they've got three books, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know? And all the books is Chinua Achebe and Gugiwa Thiongo, which they, yeah. you know they bought only because it looks good, you know? <laughs> it yeah. was a set book. Yeah. It was a set book, etc. <laughs> so all I'm saying, and, mm -hmm. and nowadays, especially because you can get digital readers, mm -hmm. you can read online, there is no excuse for not reading. Mm -hmm. You can't say you can't even afford. The Start a Library initiative is to try and get Kenyans. Please contribute 2,000 shillings. Go to your local school mm -hmm. where you went to school mm -hmm. and start a library. Honestly, that's mm -hmm. all it takes. It 2,000 shillings? 2,000 shillings. Yeah. 2, shillings. Okay. And we start a library in a school. I mean, all I'm trying to say is that <laughs> somehow we <laughs> all have to be fired up yes. with the urgency of the need to educate our children, the need to make sure that they have the relevant knowledge, mm -hmm. the need to enter the knowledge economy, and we can't do that by just talking about it. We've got to manifest it in what mm -hmm. we do, mm -hmm. in what we write, in what yeah. we say. Yeah. So if we say reading is important, please read. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and is this the first mm. time that uh, Story Moja is, be, is being involved, is getting involved in such uh, a, a very timely uh, project? No, 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 no. It's not the first time. Mm -hmm. uh, like for Stata Library, we started it uh, last year. But because of the, still, I'll go back to the reading <laughs> revolution. <Yes. laughs> so basically, we saw that uh, in most schools, in most public schools and community-based schools, uh, the people don't, the children don't read. But basically, because of two main, mm -hmm. uh, two main things. One, the attitude. 
and two, access of the books. Mm -hmm. So we need to change this attitude because Kenya really is not a, a, a reading nation. So we need to change the attitude mm -hmm. and uh, insist like you have to read. Yes. Yeah, a reading nation is a thinking nation. There's mm -hmm. no shortcut. All right. And then uh, the second thing is access to books. So most because of uh, poverty levels, most children cannot afford the books. Despite the primary education is still fine, they can't uh, afford the books. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to do, and as such a library, we are really insisting on storybooks because uh, the education system is set in such a way that you read for exams. Mm -hmm. So what you're trying to say is to, to make the children read for exams perfectly, <laughs> we want them to enjoy reading storybooks mm -hmm. first. To read storybooks, when it comes to grasping concepts that are, being going to be, that are going to be set in exams, mm -hmm. then you'll be perfect. You don't need to now to cram so that you can pass exam. Mm -hmm. You automatically pass. True. So this is what we really needed to change, the attitude and then the access. And that's why we, we make an appeal to the public and organizations mm -hmm. that start a library in a, a community school, in the school where you learn, mm -hmm. in, in uh, local libraries, everywhere you can start a library, just to make sure that everybody has access to books, uh, right. all the children have access to books. And as our motto says, like, we want a book in every hand, mm -hmm. we really hope that every Kenyan child will get that opportunity to read a book. Okay. Yeah. So mm -hmm. passionate. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be <laughs> in a minute, we'll be talking about the... Uh, read aloud yes all right but before then uh Muthoni, how is the book how have you written the book because i know kids i, I remember when i was <laughs> <laughs> in my younger years so to speak uh there was the book hello friends which of course had the you know pictorials and very nice colors and you mm -hmm. I mean, every child remembers, everyone I think remembers that book, Tom and Mary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How have you written the book? Is it in a very, is it simplistic or is it like a novel? It, um, it is in a sense like a novel mm -hmm. in that it is, um, it is written, the core target group for it mm -hmm. would be about a 10, 10 to 14 okay. years. That's okay. the core target yeah. group. So it is not a picture book, mm -hmm. but having said that, it does have some pictures in it. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and it's written as science fiction. Mm -hmm. I've always been interested in sci science fiction, and I think it's one of the gro fastest growing categories around mm -hmm. the world in terms of uh, children's literature. Mm -hmm. Um, but there are not many science fiction books uh, set in Africa. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure why, because when you listen to traditional tales, they're full they're of science fiction, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's always young men who turn into <laughs> leopards and, you and know. And ogres. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ogre stories, yeah. you know, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but so I was very interested. I've always been interested in science fiction. So I've written mm -hmm. it as science fiction because I think the whole idea of... Um, of other worlds um, and if you like the metaphor for shidas mm -hmm. is the invisible problems, problems that we blame mm -hmm. each other for mm -hmm. but they're not really yeah. it's not really us to blame mm -hmm. it's those invisible problems, problems. that are not so <laughs> obvious yeah. you know and we need to do a little more investigation to find out mm -hmm. so if the problem like for instance in the book one of the issues that uh, that we discuss mm -hmm. when uh, when we're in the schools discussing with children about the books is what causes these shidas, um, what, not so much what causes the shidas to drink the water, but what causes people to blame each other when clearly it mm -hmm. is not them. Yes. Because mm -hmm. even when they are guarding the borehole, they can see none of them are, are the ones <laughs> yeah. stealing the water, and yet they still blame <laughs> each other when the water disappears. Yeah. And one of, one of the issues is to do with um, the lack of resources. Mm -hmm. So when you're in communities where there's a struggle for resources, mm -hmm then there's a certain tension that comes in that requires such sober minds, mm -hmm. such knowledge, mm -hmm. such an understanding that, please, when they're invisible, she does, let's discuss them. Yes. Let's mm -hmm. really come to a sober realization that it is not you or me, because mm -hmm. even if we stand guard, we will see. Yes. You're not stealing and I'm not stealing. <laughs> yeah. But because of that, um, that fear, yeah. that suspicion, then we find that that's the easiest way to go. We blame so each other. Yes. Right. <laughs> yes. Let's talk about the read aloud. Uh, day. What is it all about, Anne? Okay, the read aloud day is basically reading from the same text mm -hmm. at the same time, mm -hmm. but in different locations. So we've tried to rally different people, mm -hmm. different schools, mm -hmm. different libraries from the entire country mm -hmm. to read the text, uh, which will be on this coming Thursday and 31st mm -hmm. from 9 a.m. to 9.15 just basically take the text will take 15 minutes. How are you going to make that possible? From different locations, you have people reading the same, same thing? Th at the same time. At the same time. This <laughs> has been made possible by the, our partners. Okay. This is because we've partnered with uh, a number of people who are interested in our concept. Mm -hmm. um, and you're reading from the book, Attack of the Shidas, mm -hmm. and the Kenya Human Rights Commission has 
played a big role in also doing that. And this is because we, we read from this text mainly because of also we are approaching the electioneering period. Mm -hmm. Like what happens is uh, internationally, the World Read Aloud Day is normally in March, mm -hmm. but during March, uh, on the sixth day of March, but then during that time, still we we'll shall have clear elections mm -hmm. and everything will be now politics. So we thought because of the theme of the book mm -hmm. of the Attack of the Shidas, yes. the best time to do it would be now. Okay. Because now the children get an opportunity to just read the extract and know like um, the, to tackle the issue of tribalism mm -hmm. so that you look at the electioneering period as a time of, okay, we are all Kenyans, yes. we are from one tribe, yeah. we need each other, so unity is power. So basically that's why the text was chosen. Right. But the main idea is reading from the same text at the same time and you're inviting everyone to read. So far we have over 100,000 people who mm. have confirmed p participation, mm -hmm. but still every other person in the country is uh, open to reading. We will get the extract from our website mm -hmm. and you can read it. Right. So from wherever you'll be, you'll just, if I'm, if, if I'm at work, I'll just start reading at from 9, 9 to 9 o'clock. Yeah, 9.15. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, <laughs> on, yes. on Thursday, in fact, it would have been better if you could print the extract yeah. in the newspaper. Yeah. So on Thursday, <laughs> <laughs> the Thursday we'll talk about that, that off camera. <laughs> <laughs> but but um, can I just add yeah. to, to, to that? So how it actually works is that we've, through our partners, mm -hmm. we've approached very many schools mm -hmm. and facilitated them to have the extract. Okay. So what we've asked is a teacher or a head teacher mm -hmm. or somebody like that mm -hmm. to lead the children in to leading recycle. aloud. Yeah. And then what they do is they Twitter back mm -hmm. or they send an email yeah. or, or a picture. Or, or picture. picture. Yeah. We're encouraging people to do that. Mm -hmm. So again, we'll encourage the public, you <laughs> know, when you've read between 9 and 9.15 yeah. on Thursday, please send us a picture, send okay. us a, 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 tweet, <laughs> a tweet, you yeah. know, send us something, an email, you know, let us know what has happened, right. what the experience was like for you. Okay, mm. finally, where can we get the book if we are interested? All right, the <coughs> book is available in uh, all the leading bookshops, mm -hmm. so you can get it in Uchumi, in Nakumat, in, uh, and all the textbook centers, Savani's, um, so you can get it in a lot of bookshops. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much. And you can also get it online. Online. <laughs> <laughs> Attack yeah. of the Shidas is the yes. title of the book. Yes. Thank you so much, Thank Mikoni you. and Anne, for your time and of course uh, mm. for lightening up our morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. All right. Uh, uh -huh. Something else? Oh uh, yes, something else. Just uh, probably just to appreciate some of our partners who are making the read aloud mm -hmm. day possible. We have the Kenya Human Rights Commission. Mm -hmm. We partnered with the uh, Nairobi City Council for the, uh, all the city. This basically means all the city council schools in Nairobi will be participating. Okay. We have the IMAC, which is uh, uh, Education for Marginalized Kenyan uh, Children, mm -hmm. which is uh, basically funded by Aga Khan Foundation all and right. USAID. And we have the Kenya Humanist Center, who have been instrumental in giving us some of their books, right. uh, their school partner schools to read with us. Um, basically, those are some of the partners that we have, and we are still inviting everyone to All come right. and read with us. All right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very thank much, you. <laughs> ladies. Very passionate. I know if I don't uh, stop you, you will go on and on. No, one more interesting <laughs> thing, probably. Okay, um, one more. Yeah, just one, just more. one more. There is a, a school, a uh, Kambua school for the deaf in Kiambu. Mm -hmm. They have translated the text, and they will be reading it in sign language. Oh, wow. So That's because good. the book also addresses a key issue, disability is yes. not inability. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when someone reads the book, you get to understand that concept. Right. So we are having also schools, um, uh, schools that you need to visit on that particular day when you'll be reading like right. Kawangware school Westlands primary mm -hmm. and uh, the school for the deaf all right yeah thank you so much ladies <laughs> <for your laughs> thank, you. thank you all right well we have been talking to Mutoni Mushemi who's the author of Attack of the Shidas a book that looks out to deal with ethnicity and especially among children also we were joined by Anne Eboso who's from uh, Stringer Mojan also who's played a big part in the the book and of course the read aloud day that is uh, going to be set in place this Thursday the 31st and uh, before we wind up uh, this uh, edition of Sunrise Live let me just remind you that at about 9.30 uh, today all the presidential candidates will be making their way to the IEBC headquarters to make and officially present their presidential nominations and of course we'll bring you all those details live uh, from KTN our coverage begins uh, at about 9 to about 12 p.m. and of course we'll be seeing uh, Martha Wangare Karua Peter Kenneth uh, James uh, Kiyapi, uh, Wycliffe Musale.
Kale Mudavadi and uh, Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta present their presidential nomination papers to the IEBC. And of course, we'll be bringing you these details live together with uh, studio analysts. And of course, do not miss that. We'll be talking a look at who exactly will be accompanying the presidential aspirants as they proceed to the IEBC headquarters to present their papers. That's coming up at about 9 to about uh, 12 p.m. Uh, this uh, this Tuesday, do not uh, leave KTN. Stay with us for that particular coverage. But for now, we say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching Sunrise Live. I'm Betty Kialo. Do have yourself a lovely morning.